Hi, I'm David Heineke. I'm a volunteer out here at Brazos Bend State Park, and we've got another program for you here today. This is our way of trying to keep you guys connected with your state park, Brazos Bend State Park. Now today we're going to talk about a topic, a group of animals that people seem to really, really like or really, really don't like out there, and that's the topic of snakes. Now we do a lot of talks and a lot of programs on snakes out here at Brazos Bend, mostly because there's a lot of misinformation about snakes. It seems like what some people know about snakes is what they hear from their friends or what they hear on TV or what they read on the internet. And believe it or not, depending on the sources, that isn't always the truth. And we want to talk about the truth about snakes today. Now, when we do programs out here at Brazos Bend, it seems like we get two different kinds of people that come to snake programs. We get people that really, really like snakes, and then we get people that really, really hate snakes. And there are a lot of people out there that really don't like snakes, that are scared to death, that are terrified of snakes. So let's think about some of those reasons for a second before we get started here. Some people don't like snakes because they bite, and that's true, they can bite. Some people don't like snakes because they think they're slimy. Well, if you know anything about snakes, you know they're really not slimy at all. Some people don't like snakes because they're venomous, and that's true, some of them are. Some people don't like snakes because they're dangerous, and that's true, they can be. But let's look at those reasons. Do they bite? Yeah, any snakes could bite. But then again, anything with a mouth could bite. How many of you guys have a dog or a cat at home? Yeah, most of us probably. Would you be surprised to learn that more people in Texas die from dog bites than from snake bites? That's true. Uh, some people don't like snakes because they think they're slimy. They're not really slimy at all. Some people don't like snakes because they think they're dangerous. And that's true, they could be dangerous. But you guys have been out here to Brazos Bend State Park. What do you guys think the most dangerous thing out here at Brazos Bend State Park is? The snakes? The alligators? Actually, the most dangerous thing out here at Brazos Bend State Park, believe it or not, are bicycles. There's more people that get hurt out here than bicycle crashes than by snakes or alligators or anything else out here. Some people don't like snakes because they're venomous, and that's true. If you group the rattlesnakes together, the whole state of Texas, there's only four different kinds of venomous snakes and probably 40 different species or more that are non-venomous. So the vast majority of snakes out there are harmless, non-venomous snakes that want nothing to do with you at all. So we want to talk about what makes a snake a snake. And for that, we're going to use one of our little helpers here. Now, this is a Texas rat snake, and we're going to talk a little bit more about this snake specifically here in a minute. But first, we want to talk about what makes a snake a snake, because they've got some really cool features that other animals don't have. Now, the first thing we notice about a snake a lot of times is the way they're sticking their tongues out back and forth. There you go, right on cue. And that's how snakes smell. Now, snake has, snakes have noses, and they smell a little bit through their noses, but most of the sense of the smell comes from their tongue. So, instead of coming home at night and going and see what mama's cooking for supper, the snake six sticks his tongue out and waves it back and forth and picks up little air particles on his tongue, and that's how he tells what you guys smell like. So it's more or less tasting the air. In fact, that's why the snake's tongue is forked at the end. That way he can pick up more little air particles on his tongue. Uh, it also gives him a sense of direction. So he flips his tongue out and moves it back and forth and brings it back into his mouth and touches it up against the roof of his mouth where he has a special little organ called a Jacobson's organ, and that's how he tells what you guys smell like. So that would be an adaptation that he has. Another adaptation that snakes have is, what do you notice that he's missing off the side of his head that we have? Ears. Snakes don't have any ears. So snakes don't hear noises like we do. So if you come walking down the trail and you see a snake in the middle of the trail and you say, get out of here, snake, is he going to hear you? Of course not. But if you come stomping down the trail like that, snakes are really good at picking up vibrations. So they actually rest their head on the ground and they can actually feel vibrations of a pe person or a people or a truck or a vehicle or a horse or something coming down the trail and know that they better get out of the way. So they don't hear noises like we do, but they feel noises. That's one of the differences between snakes and lizards. Lizards have e external ears and snakes don't have any external ears. Now, another difference in snakes and lizards are their eyes. Have you ever seen a snake with his eyes closed? No, because snakes are one of the few animals that don't have any eyelids at all. What they have is like a little clear set of goggles over their eyes, a little clear scale over their eyes, and that gives them some protection from getting poked in the eyes, and it helps hold some moisture in their eyes. And every time they shed their skin, they get a new little scale on there. Now, as if you've walked around out in the woods, you've probably found an old snake skin like this. 
Now, as people, do we shed our skins like this? Of course not. But every day we have little pieces of skin that are flaking off. About every six weeks, we get a whole new set of skin. The only difference with the snake is he does it all at once. As this snake starts to grow, he releases some chemicals between his layers of skin and his eyes will get all clouded over. A couple of days after that, a little piece of skin right here on the end of his nose poof, will peel up like that. And as he crawls along the forest floor, he'll catch this piece of skin on something and just peel off his foot, peel it off his body inside out and leaves this snake skin behind. Now, if you find a snake skin like this and you look really carefully, you can find the little scales that came off of his eyes. These two little round scales right here. So he gets a new set of goggles, a new set of contact lenses every time he sheds his skin. Now, every time a rattlesnake sheds his skin, a little piece of skin gets stuck on the end of his tail. And that's what makes up the rattle. So all the rattle on the end of a rattlesnake's tail is, is a bunch of little dried up pieces of skin. And every time he sheds his skin, he gets one more. And then he sheds the next time, and he gets one more set of skin like that, one more rattle like that. When it gets to be too long, it just falls off altogether. Now, this is another adaptation. So who can tell me, why does a rattlesnake have a rattle on the end of his tail anyway? Well, that's right. It's a way to make a warning. It's his way of saying, hey, you're over there. I'm over here. You leave me alone. I'll leave you alone, and we'll both go our own ways. This is a pretty cool adaptation. I mean, here's an animal with no ears, yet he has a noisemaker on his tail to warn people not to get too close. Now, the rat snake is obviously a non-venomous snake, or we wouldn't have him out here. So what do you think we'd find if we pried this little guy's mouth open and looked inside? Great big fangs in there? No, what we'd find is a whole lot of little bitty needle-sharp teeth. Most non-venomous snakes have at least three rows of really sharp little needle-like teeth two rows across the top and one row across the bottom. And they're made for grabbing prey and holding on. So if we were to look at our teeth, our teeth kind of come straight up and down. Our teeth are made for cutting. But a snake's tooth are angled towards the back at about a 45 degree angle. So they're not very good for biting. They're just, just good for hanging on. The reason that they're angled backwards like that is once he gets food in his mouth, there's only one way for it to go, straight down his throat like that. They don't chew their food. They don't take a bite out of their food. If they can't swallow it in one big gulp, it doesn't get swallowed at all. So think about that for a minute. When a snake bites a person, is he trying to take a bite out of you and eat you for lunch? No. Is he trying to swallow you in one big gulp? No. There's only one reason why snakes bite people out there, and that's to protect themselves. I mean, imagine if you're a little snake on the ground, and here comes this big giant, and I start poking at you with a stick and you don't have any legs to run away with or any arms to hit me with, how are you going to protect yourself? That's right, you're going to bite. And whose fault would it be? It'd be my fault for poking you at a, with a stick. And that's the way most people wind up getting bit by snakes out there in the wild. Now, as I mentioned before, this is called a Texas rat snake. And this is one of the most common species of snakes that we have around here. Uh, these snakes really love to climb up in trees. If you see a big snake around here in this part of Texas, especially if it's up in a tree, there's a good chance it's going to be a Texas rat snake. This one right here is about six feet four inches. If we straighten her out and measure, measure him, he really doesn't like to be straightened out, so you're going to have to take my word for it like that. But these snakes are really good climbers. One of their adaptations that rat snakes have is if we look at their stomachs down here, their stomachs are really flat, flatter than most species of snakes. And that lets them do, make, make some really good climbers. If we were to put this snake out on a tree or even on a brick wall, it would climb up there without any problem at all. Now they like to climb up in trees where they'll eat bird's eggs and they'll eat baby birds. And one this big might even eat little squirrels like that. Now another name for this snake is a chicken snake. If you kept chickens at home for their eggs, this might be your worst enemy because this snake would love to get up there and swallow chickens' eggs. Even a rat snake with a head just the size of my thumb could swallow a full-size chicken's egg. That would be like one of you swallowing a soccer ball without letting the air out of it. Snake skulls are real soft and rubbery, so they'll stretch out. Where our jaws are pulled up tight on the sides, their jaws will stretch out. Where our jaws are connected in the center right here, their jaws will stretch out this way. So with a head this big and an egg this big, it'll come up and it'll just stretch its head over that egg and it'll swallow the egg and go down here about halfway and be a great big lump in there for a couple of days until it'll squeeze along something and squeeze and pop, breaks the eggshell and spits the egg back up. 
Now, when this guy's not eating eggs, what do you think his favorite food is? That's right, he lives up to his namesake. He's a big rat and a mouse eater. So this would probably be the best mouse trap that you could ever get. If you've got a barn or a garage or a feed room and you've got mice running around in there, what do most people go out and get to eat their mice? They'll go out and buy a cat, won't they? Well, if you've got a cat, you've got a little, you've probably got little holes where the snakes like to go and where the mice like to go and hide. Can your cat fit inside those little holes to find the mice? No, so what's he do? He sits outside those holes, eating that expensive food from the grocery store. Every once in a while, your cat might get lucky and get a mouse. Let me tell you what to do. If you want to get rid of your mice, get rid of your cat and get yourself a rat snake. If he's in an area where there's a lot of mice, he could probably eat a mouse every single day. Then again, if he's in an area where there's not too many mice, he could survive on one mouse about every four or five weeks. Can you imagine that eating for four or five weeks? I mean, I can't imagine that eating for four or five hours, much less four or five weeks. One of the advantages of being cold-blooded, like our reptile friends, is they don't have to eat nearly as often as we do. As mammals, we have to eat a lot of food, a lot of calories, just to maintain our body heat. Uh, snakes, on the other hand, just like lizards and other reptiles, are cold-blooded, so they don't have to eat nearly as often as we do. Now, rat snakes, like a lot of other species of snakes, are constrictors. Uh, we've all heard of boa constrictors and pythons that squeeze their prey to kill it. And a lot of people think what they do is they squeeze it and they, they crush it to death. Actually, what they do is they squeeze it and suffocate it. If the snake comes up on a, a mouse or a rat, he'll bite it to hold it in place and wrap his body around it. And every time the little mouse breathes out, the snake squeezes a little bit harder. And then the little mouse breathes out, and the snake squeezes a little bit harder. After a few minutes of this, the snake lets the mouse go and nudges him, makes sure he's good and dead, and swallows him down head first, almost always head first. That way the little arms and legs just fold right up to the side like that. Now, as I mentioned, this is not a, not a venomous snake, but venom, non-venomous snakes can still bite, and they can still have some nasty infections caused by their bites. So just because a snake is non-venomous doesn't mean it's okay to go up and grab it. Unless you know what you're doing, uh, or unless you're with an adult who knows what they're doing, you should never go up and grab a snake in the wild. Even if, it's not a non, even if it is a non-venomous snake, it could still bite. Now, if you follow a few common sense rules, you'll probably never have a negative uh, contact with a snake. Rule number one that I tell people is if you're out here hiking at the park, or even if you're hiking around the city park somewhere or going for a walk, you know, put on your shoes, put on your boots. Be careful if you're walking around barefoot or if you're walking around in sandals. A lot of our venomous snakes are little venomous snakes, and even though they're little, if you step on their, on their tail with your sandals, what are they going to do with their heads? That's right. Never put your hands and feet anywhere where you can't see. If you're out here at Brazos Bend State Park and you're kicking the soccer ball around and it rolls underneath the bushes over there, should you reach under there and feel around for it? No, man, you might find an eight-foot alligator underneath a bush out here at Brazos Bend State Park. Uh, if you're walking around the park, stay on the trails. Don't go back through the tall grass. Don't go back through the bushes. That's where you're more likely to find a snake. If you're camping out here at the park and you get up in the middle of the night to walk down the street to the bathroom, put on your boots, put on your shoes, take your flashlight. Instead of shining the flashlight up in the trees and inside everybody else's tent to see what's going on, keep it down here on the ground where it needs to be, where you can see where your feet are. And rule number one, if you forget everything I told you today, remember this. If you see a snake, just leave him alone. Don't try to catch him, don't try to kill him, don't try to move him. If you follow those simple rules, you'll probably never have a negative contact with a snake in the wild, okay? Hope you enjoyed this program. We'll do some more programs on venomous snakes in the coming weeks, so keep watching, okay? Thanks a lot, and hope to see you back at Brazos Bend State Park really soon.